everyone, this is Paul Gale from paulgalenetwork.com and thank you for joining me today for my unboxing video of the Xbox Series X. <laughs> this is an exciting time for the video game industry because new consoles don't come out all of the time and as it happens to be, we've got an exciting week with the Xbox Series S and X followed by PlayStation 5. Now, some may say this is the true beginning of the ninth generation of video gaming. I say that the ninth gen technically began with Nintendo Switch back in 2017. I have my reasons. Some of them are it is a proper successor to Nintendo's Wii U, which was an eighth gen console. Um, it does, Nintendo Switch that is, have a three and a half year newer appeal to it coming out in 2017 as opposed to 2013 when the PS4 and Xbox One came out. And in terms of overall technology and how it advanced the industry, maybe it didn't do so in terms of raw horsepower and graphical prowess over PS4 and Xbox One when it comes to TV. However, in what it did overall was bring modern day TV gaming visuals, comparable fidelity and whatnot, on the go completely. And not just that relationship of portable and TV nature, but what it did in terms of its versatility, its Joy-Con, its controller, its HD rubble that came with it. But enough of that. You could say that now that we officially have a designated console, pure console, that the ninth gen of console only gaming has started and will continue with the PS5. But none of that's that important right now. This is an unboxing video. This is exciting. I'm not here to talk too much about politics. I do have my own video game news and video game talk segments that I deep dive more into that, but I thought I'd give a little bit of insight. So here's to the actual opening of this. Let's get to it. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you from my perspective what I'm seeing. All right, so we're going to open this up. First, spin it around. Show off the artwork on the back one more time. It's Halo Infinite, which unfortunately did not make launch, but it will come out when it's ready, and I'm sure it will be worth it when that happens. A delayed game that's handled well is better than a rushed game that, you know, it just needs a bunch of patches and whatnot. Plus, even though there aren't any necessarily... Mm, triple-a exclusive games coming out at launch for the xbox series x there are plenty of titles to play via game pass and some nice third-party efforts from various publishers that are supporting the system so that's good well, let's open it up inside we have a nice box of the Xbox. Take away these heavy duty, I gotta say. Nice quality job, Microsoft. Protecting that, that's for sure. And the console itself. It made this feel like a nice product, which is pretty sweet. Props to Microsoft. Power your dreams. Okay, let's see. Which way is top, which way is bottom? I think this is top. We'll just find out. Feels good. Unboxing new systems always fun. Okay, I guessed incorrectly. This is the bottom. So let's flip that up. Side down. And there you go. When we first saw this system unveiled, it looked like this might have been a green light but it's not a green light that's shining it's painted green so when you look at it from different angles on the inside it curves out and you see it's green and it curves out and you see it's green so pretty cool the look of this system blew me away it's not necessarily my favorite looking console ever but i gotta say it was one of the most shocking reveals because when it did launch for the first time at the Game Awards in 2019, we were not expecting, at least I wasn't expecting, a brand new console to be revealed that day. So when we 
saw this thing, this tower, it's like, what is that? Wait a minute, are, you just, are they just showing the Xbox right now? And yeah, they did. And uh, looks pretty cool. Different. Was not expecting Microsoft to have that type of looking system, but I gotta say, makes sense. A lot of airflow sucking out the top. Pretty smart design. I'm bringing the box back in the picture. Looks like we're gonna have some controller guide of how to insert some batteries and whatnot. No doubt the controller's in here and then probably an HDMI 2.1 cable for 4K TVs to best show off all the glory. There you go. Pretty good length, I'd say. Good thickness. Power cord. Possibly on the short side, we'll see. And... The not too different, but probably going to be just fine, Xbox Series X controller. I say not too different because, well, Microsoft said it's not too different. And it feels actually quite good. <laughs> kind of weird, honestly. It's different. First of all, it's lighter than my other controllers just because it doesn't have batteries in it yet. But... I'm sure that with batteries, it will feel the same. L and R, clicky. You've got different texture material, material right here in the back for the grips. That's kind of nice. Microsoft has done a really good job last generation with the Xbox One and One X with their custom design labs. Ooh, the D-pad feels pretty good. This might be my preferred way how to play Street Fighter next gen. I like to practice every controller of a new generation of platforms. First at E3, and this is actually the first time that I'm not trying a new controller out for a system just until, you know, launch date. Usually it's at E3 where I try out the GameCube controller for the first time, Xbox, PS2, 3, 4, Xbox One, etc. Here, we didn't have an E3 this year, unfortunately, with the pandemic and also, this is my first time holding the controller in hand and, you know, we've even got texture grips on the back triggers, that's nice. Feel a little bit different. Mm, some good placement here. D-pad, it's interesting, it's quite a bit different. I actually have with me right here a comparison of the Xbox One Day One 2013 Edition controller and the Xbox Series X controller. Same color layout, mm, similar placement. They went away with any extra plastic here and reflective material and it's just matte. Of course, you have one additional button. The D-pad occupies the same space. Appears to be the same amount of contact area, surface area between analog stick and D-pad. My thumb sticks under here a little bit more than it does here. Hmm, maybe not, but the D-pad, it gives off a different look. This D-pad was okay, but this one feels better. It sounds better, right? And if you want, you could look at the Xbox One X controller, the Project Scarlet, sorry, Project Scorpio edition. And it has a bit of a different texture to it than the original Xbox One controller had, but um, this one's got definitely more grippiness. So that's pretty cool. And as I was saying earlier, I like to practice the Hadoukens on each controller. I usually like to start off my match, well, not to give away my whole strategy, but one of the ways I like to start off my matches is I jump forward at an angle. I like to position this as medium punch and this is hard punch, so I jump forward as with Ryu, Jump forward, pop, pop, punch, Shoryuken. Come on, boom. This feels fast, it's nice. Hmm, cool. I'm gonna flip the camera angle around and show you what the console looks like in hand from the other perspective. All right, so here we are, looking at the front. Me holding the Xbox Series X. This is what the system looks like next to your typical five foot 11 and a half tall inch man. Um, 
And as I said previously, it's not my favorite looking system ever, but I have no complaints either. It really is like a two and a half Nintendo GameCubes tall. Got that green glow picking it up on the camera. Pretty cool. It's nice. It's elegant. It's slick. It's clean. It's kind of simple. It should stand the test of time visually, you know, from an aesthetic standpoint, being so plain kind of doesn't mean that it will be defined by any one particular age. Like, oh, that's a 90s product. That's an 80s product. That's a 2000s product, you know? It's just a rectangle. Got the bottom. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to hold it in my entertainment center, well, or position, I should say, in my entertainment center horizontally or vertically. I have the space technically to do either, so it just depends. Looks like Microsoft's preferred way of you positioning it is in vertical mode, as the vents will suck out air top and expel it, provided that you have a decent amount of roof clearance. But on the side, you know, it will work as well. Obviously, the, you know, 4K Blu-ray drive works to read the disc, CD reads the disc, or laser reads the disc, I should say, either way. So that's okay. So we'll see how I position it. Um, to show you the controller one more time, got the microphone head jack at the bottom. You have the opportunity to charge. You know, now that I put the batteries in it, it does have a little bit more heft to it. Um, but that wasn't a make it or break it if it was too light or too heavy in the first place. I like the controller. It does feel really good. Microsoft took a fairly safe approach with the Evolution, but they really nailed the Xbox One controller so nicely that they didn't need to deviate from it too much. So I'm glad that it's familiar. I'm glad that it's recognizable. Games that you're playing, that we've been playing for the past several years, should feel natural here. And new games that come out in similar franchises, ah, they'll feel like right at home, you know? However, I wouldn't have minded seeing Microsoft improve rumble mechanics of their own in this controller. You know, Nintendo did it with HD rumble three years ago, and Sony's going to do it with the DualSense on the PS5. Microsoft doesn't necessarily need it, but it is nice to have everything in one. You know, and for that matter, should it have had you know, USB Type-C charging right off the bat. You can have, you know, uh, a battery pack that you slap in and have the same effect, but the fact that it is AA by default is fine. Uh, personally, I've gotten used to just, you know, sitting on the couch. I've got my start charging station off to my left, and, you know, that's where I have my iPhone. That's where the kid's iPad is charged. That's where I've got my Wii U gamepad still charging. And my Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, you know? Just USB Type-C or Lightning, whatever. Pop it in, boom. And that would be okay with this. On the flip side, you know, you always have a double-A pair of batteries on hand, or at least uh, most people probably should, hopefully. And, you know, I also have double-A rechargeable batteries, so it's not that inconvenient to swap out. So I guess you get the best of both worlds. You could do the double-A method, or you could do... Um, you know, the swappable battery to replicate that internal lithium ion pack like the other guys had. Those are the controller side by side, very comparable. Looking at it like this though, I'm like, hmm, this one looks more like the Xbox 360 white controller and this one looks uh, a little bit more modern, as it should. You know, a little bit slicker ergonomics. They parted with this extra plastic differentiator, like I said previously. It's cool. I think it's going to be an awesome generation. I don't think there's going to be one dominating console that obliterates the competition. Hmm. You can see they borrowed some of the elements of the old one, and then eventually they went away with that little dip. You know, in the past... We've had generations that were closer to one another. And then we've had some lopsided ones, like when it came to PlayStation versus Nintendo 64 and Sega Saturn. From a software perspective, Nintendo 64 held up just fine. You know, you had 10 million sellers like Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64, GoldenEye 007, that beat or competed very closely to PlayStation's own, you know, top-selling software equivalent. 
But from a console perspective, you're looking at 100 million to 33 million, right? Big difference. PS2, same thing. 155 million PS2s to, you know, 24, 23 million Xbox and GameCubes. We was a more even generation, you know, we was the winner at 101 million, but then you had Xbox and, um, or I should say Xbox 360 and PS3, like in that 86, 85 million territory, you know, and then the last gen was another one of those lopsided ones, you know, PS4 with 114 million. We don't have official numbers of, you know, Xbox One, but less than half. And then Wii U, of course, with, you know, less than 14. But now that we're in the ninth gen, and it's kind of weird because, you know, Nintendo Switch technically is already at 70 million. And that's why some people are like, well, that's not fair. It came out too early, or it's not a pure console, and, you know, blah, 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 whatever. If you count it as part of it, it's got that head start, it's at 70. But I don't think it's going to be always 70 ahead, you know? I don't think it's going to hit 100 and the other guys are only going to hit 30. No, no chance. I expect to see PS5 probably doing about as well as PS4. They've got a lot of forward momentum. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a PS5 being another, you know, 90 million seller. Like, that's very strong. Whether it hits 114 like PS4 or doesn't, it's going to be within a pretty close percent, I think. I think the Xbox Series X is actually going to be a big jump over the Xbox One. I wouldn't call it the number one best-selling platform in the world because I don't think that Microsoft is going to get full market penetration in Japan. And any company that is dead last in Japan is going to have a difficult time being first overall in the world, you know? Because if you're comparable in other territories like Europe and the United States and Canada and Mexico and so forth, but you're just dead last in Japan. Then unless if those other countries, you know, you're far ahead, being dead last in Japan is going to hurt you. So it's going to be interesting to see, can Microsoft ever become number one truly worldwide? Uh, we'll see. But I don't think Microsoft's that concerned about that. They've got Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. It's a fantastic service. You know, whether you do the Xbox Live Gold conversion to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and do the whole $1 deal and flip it and bam, now you're paying very little or you're going to just straight up go into the $15 a month, no BS, just that's your plan, that's, your, that's what you're okay with. It's still a very good value of how much gaming you're getting for so little money. And, you know, now that Microsoft has new studios, always acquiring Bethesda, the latest big one. What's the future of Doom and Wolfenstein? Will we see it only on Xbox Series X and S? Or will it be like a timed exclusive where we get, you know, a one-year head start or a six-month head start, and then it releases on Nintendo Switch 2 or Nintendo Switch Plus, Pro, New, whatever, and PS5, right? And for that matter, Game Pass Ultimate. Is Xbox going to branch out into possibly being available on other platforms like could you eventually see xbox game pass ultimate on something like nintendo switch i don't know kind of crazy kind of wild but it's possible well anyways this went from unboxing video to video game talk a video game news hybrid can't help it i love video games i love talking about games hope you enjoyed my unboxing video i've got high hopes you know if you want to call xbox one like a 55 million selling console, something in that neighborhood, then I would give Xbox Series X and S the pairing of at least hitting 80, you know? Especially thanks to S. S is, you know, a lot weaker in comparison, but for $300, a base entry point, that affordable to get into this new generation of gaming is pretty awesome for a lot of people, you know? Slap in an external hard drive, play refrigerator kind of with your games, but just have access to tons of stuff at all times. Something that you're not going to have to upgrade if you're not all about 4K and you're okay with just 1080p even. You're fine. That's really cheap. It could only get cheaper in time. So a few years from now, could you be looking at a $250, $200, you know, 
still pretty powerful Xbox Series console. Yeah, um, it's an exciting time. I don't want to predict a winner yet. Winner doesn't really matter. Gaming industry, healthy competition, that's what matters. If you have a favorite, you shouldn't want the other side to fail. You should want the other side to do well and play that side. You owe it to yourself as a gamer to enjoy everything, but play that side so that your favorite sees, ah, our fan base likes those games. Draw inspiration for us to do better, to make our loyal people like our product more by giving them more, right? Competition, it's a good thing. All right, thanks for watching. This is Paul Gale Network signing out. Hope you all have a good one, and I'll see you soon as the generation continues. Bye.